Facebook, Wet54 channel on Twitter, Wet54 underscore channel on the gram. Hashtag of the day is Thursday Vibes, Minute 12 Val. And it's the latest breakfast show in this here town, in this here city. If you don't know, ask somebody. We run all the way from 7 in the morning till 10 in the morning. And it's a daily show, so Monday all the way through Friday. Eh, Kwanza Kesho. But Kabla Tufike, Kwanini Kesho, Situkeke Tuapa. It's my complete honor to introduce to you a very, very phenomenal lady. She looks great. Oh my gosh. And. Hey, she's about to pass wisdom. Sijui kama nyuela medai that color, baby, perhaps for this <laughs> time and purpose. I don't know. But give it up, everyone, for a chain butler. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. How are you? I'm really well. Thank you so much for having me on the show. I'm glad you came. It's a complete honor. Complete. <laughs> Please introduce yourself. Although I've just said your name. Please reintroduce yourself. Wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> so my name is Ara Cheng Butler. I'm the CEO of Digital Beehive, which <laughs> is a digital marketing and consultancy firm. <laughs> Um, so that's what I do as my day job. Mm -hmm. And um, in my free time as a passion project, I do a lot of career coaching and mentoring. Mm -hmm. Yes. So let's start there from career coaching because I feel like, first of all, nowadays, okay, although it's not our fault, it's not really the system's fault, COVID-19 has come with a lot of things. Schools had been closed for a long time and now that they're back, it's insane. My auntie was sending me the, the timetable for my cousin and the longest break is a week between terms. Like, eh, term one, okay, me term three days. Okay, now you close one week and it's a lot. And then they yeah. have to also adjust because she's a former one. She's adjusting to now brand new subjects and it's a whole lot. Oh, eh, like, come on me, you got this. <laughs> but aside from that, I want you to help me understand how someone maybe who's in high school right now, mm -hmm. or maybe who's gone through the process, but is still kind of shaky on mm -hmm. the matter, how to choose what we're going to do for the rest of our lives. Mm -hmm. How do you go about it? Like, is it, do we watch it on TV? Do we wait for a voice to whisper in our ears? Like, <laughs> how does it work? I wish it was that easy. I know. <laughs> and you know, it's hard. Mm -hmm. You know, I always say it's, it's so unfair to expect a young person who is 16 years old to know what they're going to do for the rest of their lives. It's so difficult to know. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the time we sort of choose a career direction. A lot of the time it's because maybe our parents have put us under pressure or you must be a doctor, you must be an engineer, mm -hmm. you must be a lawyer. You know, all those careers that are sort of very formalized. And yet the world has changed. And, you know, when I was 19, mm -hmm. the kind of careers that you could pursue versus today. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wish I could be 19 today because I there's know. so much more opportunity. Mm. So to your question, how do you choose? I usually suggest that you think about a number of things. Mm -hmm. There's the things that you're good at. So you might find that you're really brilliant at, I don't know, math. But you could also find that you're really brilliant at creative writing, mm -hmm. for example. And so sometimes you're good at certain things. But there's a second category, which is you can, be, you, can be, you can actually love certain things. Mm -hmm. So you're not obliged to only do what you studied. You could also explore building a career in what you're good at that comes kind of naturally. Or you could explore building a career with around things that you love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's okay. I want you to imagine we were just trying to define mm -hmm, what a hustler is. And apparently a hustler is not someone who is protected by 275 armed people <laughs> is, is a bit more humble beginning. So I want to imagine that there is a student out there or a pupil, pupil, pupil high school. Mm -hmm. I, I can't remember what's the difference between a pupil and a, a student, but anyway, one of those. So this person is not just going to school, but this person is also l kind of giving in to the, to the family. Do you understand? So maybe if my mom is doing this, my dad is doing this, I also have to do this because maybe I have a lot of siblings or I'm the oldest or I'm in this particular place in the society, so I must chip in yeah. as I read. Mm -hmm. So how, how do I now start thinking about what I want to do when the things that I have to do kind of take in charge? You know, it's, it's about being conscious of it. It's mm -hmm. a, you know, about knowing what you're good at. So I'm going to give you a very real example. Mm -hmm. There's a lady I met um, a few, maybe now three weeks ago. She's at the university. I think she's in her first or second year. Young, very, very sort of committed, very hardworking and so on. Mm. How did I meet this lady? I bought something online and they did the delivery. 
and and they had called me and said we don't deliver on Saturdays because our delivery lady um, you know it, that's the day she worships so she'll deliver on Sunday if that's okay with you so Sunday morning my delivery comes in mm -hmm. and it was this young lady and she was very charming and nice we started chatting she told me I'm at the university I said oh really so how come you're doing the delivery do you do this as a side hustle are mm -hmm. you you know is, is this your you know are you a, a hustler mm -hmm. doing you know, mm -hmm. legit trying to, you know, earn an extra, you know, income stream. Mm -hmm. And she said, actually, I do this to help my sister mm. who runs this business. Oh. I also help my mum who does curtains and stuff. And so, you know, when she needs support or help or deliveries or whatever, I help her do that. Mm -hmm. And I do this on the side to make some extra money because mm -hmm. I'm at the University of Nairobi. Mm -hmm. And I thought that is absolutely fantastic. Now, this is a classical case where she's obviously having to chip in to help the family. So she needs to, you know, either help them with the business. And at the same time, she earns an extra shilling or two because like her sister, for example, pays her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take away from the fact that, number one, she's pursuing her studies mm -hmm. at the university. And number two, that she's got a passion. So her dream is to start a business. She wants to, be, to become an entrepreneur and she wants to start selling uh, thrift, uh, thrift clothing or newly used clothing, mm -hmm. you know. And that's her dream, she says, because young people are really into fashion and I want to be able to, you know, go pick some nice stuff and, mm -hmm. you know, sell, you know, start my business and sell. So I think even though you have responsibilities to help your family at home, don't look at it you know, the glass is e always either half full or half empty. Mm -hmm. Don't look at it as the glass is half empty, as in, oh, no, I have to help the family. That means I can't pursue my dreams. Mm -hmm. Keep your dreams in mind. Maybe you don't have time because between your studies and, your, and helping your family, you're not able to fully, you know, invest your time and, your, you know, your, maybe your, your savings in starting your business. Mm -hmm. But then the, the opportunity will come. You know, and I think there's, there's always um, a benefit to being young mm -hmm. because what you have is time. If there's one thing you have, it's, it's time. And energy. Mm -hmm. You don't get exhausted. Mm -hmm. you, know, you party for three days in a row and mm -hmm. then you're still in class and then you, you know, you're hanging out with your friends and then you've got your little business you're doing. Young people have energy. I, I don't understand how you're able to, to sleep for three hours a day, but mm -hmm. you can. Mm -hmm. you know? So there's, there's always ways that you can find time and a balance. Mm -hmm. And if you're not able to do it immediately, you will certainly have the opportunity. So don't put aside your dreams mm -hmm. and write them off as not possible because you're helping the family. Mm -hmm. There'll always be an opportunity at some point where you can juggle the two and eventually fully um, focus on your side hustle or starting your little business. I like that. Mm -hmm. You can do both. Relax. Before we get to your day job, you said you are a mentor. And I like to believe that uh, some of the things that you coach people through is... is basically life skills, you know, the difference between motivation and discipline. Motivation, mm -hmm. oh, you'll get excited a few days and uh, I don't feel like today, it's raining, it's cold, um, it's hot. Ah, there's always a reason to not do something, yeah. especially if it's benefiting you, by the way. There's always a reason not to do it. But where motivation fails, discipline now carries you on. You'll do it whether it's cold, whether you're tired, whether you're not feeling so good, whether yeah, you come rain or shine, you will do it. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you, and who do you coach? Like, is a particular age brackets walk me through that okay so first of all um, mentorship is really important and you know a lot of people might wonder is there value in actually being mentored and I'd say yes I have a mentor who's mentored me for 30 years Wow actually 26 27 years he was my boss way back when mm -hmm. and he's mentored me through the years we're very very good friends now um, and every time I'm making a really big career decision usually I'm very clear about the decisions I'm making but I'll bounce it off him just to get a perspective, an objective perspective, a, a different take mm -hmm. on what I'm, you know, the big step that I'm trying to take. So I generally believe, I believe in mentorship because I've seen and had the benefit of, of being mentored by really amazing people. Mm -hmm. He's the main one who's kind of stayed through the years. Um, and I prefer to mentor young people, 18, usually I mentor 18 to, I'd say 18 to 30, 35. Um, and it's on a host of things. It can be on life skills. Um, it can be on how to handle a situation at work. It can be on how to build your career, you know, the career planning aspect of it. It can just be on some advice because you're juggling stuff in your personal life. Maybe family and the pressures of family are there and you're kind of just struggling to figure out how to deal mm -hmm. or navigate that. Yeah. So 18 to 35. But I also do coaching with the coaching. It tends to be with more senior people, people in kind of middle, upper middle or senior management, you know, mm -hmm. so people even at director level. Um, and I'll do the coaching, which is really around helping them work through certain aspects of, 
usually it'll be based on the things that they may feel they're struggling with or maybe they're feeling a little stuck mm -hmm. in their careers and they want to work through it or they've just gotten a promotion there's one lady i was dealing with who had just gotten a promotion um, her boss quit and she was immediately promoted into c-suite and wow. she was like oh my goodness mm. i never saw this coming mm. out of the blue i need some coaching to to help me figure out how to work through this and how to manage and how to navigate. What do I need to be doing differently now that I'm in the C-suite, now that I'm in the executive committee? Mm -hmm. So I'll mentor mostly young people and I'll do the coaching with more sort of seasoned uh, professionals. Your knowledge must be vast. Eh? To be in a position where you not only walk people through life skills at 18 to 35-ish to, you know, more, hey. I've worked for 30 years. If I haven't picked up a thing or two by now. Hey. <laughs> By the way, I'm taking a number after this. So see, you're going to interview to father. You know, the <laughs> benefits of coming to work are many. There are many. <laughs> Hashtag is that Thursday vibes. Okay, let's get into your day job. You deal mm -hmm. a lot with digital. Mm -hmm. Tell me exactly what you do, maybe on a Monday to Monday. All right. So my background is in strategic marketing. I worked in strategic marketing for almost 30 years, about 20, 22, 25 years mm -hmm. um, across all of Africa. So I built quite, I built quite a bit of expertise um, in strategic marketing, but also in understanding and working in different African markets. I speak both French and English, so I worked in the French speaking markets as well as in the English speaking markets. Mm. So a, a day in my life or a week in, in my life, um, usually I do a lot of the business development myself, which is looking for new business. Mm -hmm. And relationships, the people you meet every day, your network is your net worth. Mm -hmm. And I say that now because as an, ent an entrepreneur now, I've been an entrepreneur for about three years. Mm -hmm. The reason and the way that I've been able to grow my business is through the networks, the mm -hmm. people that I met along the way, that I built rapports with, uh, mm -hmm. rapport with, relationships with. Those are the people that will usually give me business. So sometimes people will call and say, you know, hey, I'm looking for this kind of expertise. Can you help? So what we do, um, on one hand, we do strategic marketing, which is everything around, you know, building the brand. Um, you know, what, what, how do you want to position this brand? Who are you targeting? What do you want this brand to stand for? How are you going to communicate to this target? What is your unique selling proposition? What is it about your product? Th that makes it different and special and that m will make it relevant to that target audience. Mm -hmm. What need is it addressing with that target audience? So I'll do a lot of strategic work, you know, focus, focused on that kind of thing. And then we've got this other docket of work that we do, which is the digital marketing. So this is all things online from, you know, web design and development, mm -hmm. social media marketing and community management, digital analytics, a search engine optimization to help your, your website rank better, um, influencer management, um, so the whole strategy around the identifying the in influencers, managing them, developing the content with them so that it's aligned to your brand while it's remaining true to the influencer and, and the essence of who they are and what they stand for. Mm -hmm. so, all things digital is really um, what we do. We do a lot of work around just the digital strategy because sometimes we have clients who have their own internal team, but they're struggling to figure out how to maybe, you know, put more emphasis or be more differentiated in the digital space. Mm -hmm. So then we'll help them with digital strategy as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, two things I'm getting from this. First of all, it sounds like you benefited from the COVID-19 pandemic when now everything kind of shifted to the digital side. And two, dealing with people is not easy. How do you do it? It's not easy, especially <laughs> because clients <laughs> and then client is always right. And then you're telling the client to do this because you have seen it work and you know what you're saying, but they don't want and they don't want. You know, mm. the, so to, to, uh, to answer both questions, first of all, we were already working virtually ever since we set up the digital because we had team members in different parts of the world, mm -hmm. most of them here, but in different parts of the world. Somebody was in Spain, somebody was in India, you know, somebody so was impressive. in the US. Yeah. So we've always worked online. Mm -hmm. Certainly with COVID-19, which I think has been devastating to a lot of people, but from a business perspective, the clients who always would insist they must have FaceTime and you must drive halfway across the city, mm -hmm. two hours in traffic because mm -hmm. they want to see your face. Mm -hmm. Saying the same thing, just... Saying the same thing, just face to face. Wow. They've had to adjust and that's helped because it means we're more efficient with our time. Mm -hmm. So COVID has helped in that sense because it's made people realize actually it is possible to work and actually move things forward um, from your living room mm -hmm. or your you know, kitchen table or your little office at home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that has helped. Um, now to clients and just managing clients, mm -hmm. it takes a lot of patience. And 
I think sometimes we respond or react emotionally. And so my advice when it comes to dealing with, with clients, what has, what has helped me is I've learned to be conscious if I'm being triggered because a client maybe is, is I get you. You know, uh -huh. you, you know what I'm talking yes. about? Yes. <laughs> You're with me. Ah, I understand. Uh -huh. Yeah. And so you, sometimes you almost have to take a deep breath and not respond because you know already you can feel that your response is coming from an emotional place. Mm -hmm. And what I've also found in digital is that because a lot of clients do not have the expertise, it makes it a little easier because they'll defer to you mm -hmm. because they feel I need to trust this person or this person and her team. They seem to know what they're talking about. I don't know enough to challenge and, mm. and throw the baby out with the bathwater, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that has helped. But it, it, re it really takes a lot of patience. And I always say that when you're really triggered, don't respond then. Mm. Because it could totally, totally ruin the relationship. And relationship is key. And relationship is key. Mm. And there's also personalities, actually. Because there's some clients who are absolutely darling. We did some work with the South African Foundation. I mean, but we loved them completely. We wanted to adopt them forever and ever. <laughs> Amen. Mm. You know what I mean? They were just <laughs> such nice people. Mm. And... So some clients are just, just gems. They're wonderful. And you don't lose sleep feeling tortured because you've got a meeting with them the next day. I if like anything, that. you go the extra mile. And, mm -hmm. you know, the team and I, we were always like, oh, what else are we going to do for these guys? We're thinking we should do this. Guys, we need to shift direction. And sometimes we'd go that extra mile on something that ideally we should charge for. We wouldn't charge for it because we were so passionate about the work that they were doing, which was, you know, social impact related and very, very noble. Mm -hmm. And they were also just really wonderful people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. So mm -hmm. th not all clients are clients are from hell. <laughs> Am I allowed to say that uh, on camera? You are <laughs> allowed. It is, it is okay. I'll tell you a secret. I have a very difficult time with, with this, the whole idea of being a brand. They mm -hmm. tell me, oh, value on TV. Oh, you're a brand. Oh, you should carry yourself like that. And not just physically, mm -hmm. you know, also my social media should reflect and the things that I pursue. And, and I can accept that, you know, I, love, I like my job, I really do. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's all I want to do. I just want to do my job. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be all time, all time, social media, looking for captions. Ah, so annoying. It kind of <laughs> takes the wind out of me. Yeah. So I had to outsource. I went mm -hmm. and told a strategist, I'm like, okay, I have a problem here, very, very, very big problem, mm -hmm. mostly because I don't care, but I know I should. Yeah. So I need you to kind of be the bridge between what I'm supposed to do mm -hmm. and what I actually want to do. Mm -hmm. So in respect, is it something that you do? Do you approach clients or do, you, or do they approach you mostly? Is it sacrosanct that, you know, <laughs> approaching them <laughs> and telling them, okay, I see what you're doing and I love what you're doing. It actually kind of resonates with what I am doing. Can I help you? Is that what goes on or is it mostly help me? I, I need this, I need this, and I'm going to pay you this. Yeah, so it's, it's two ways. Sometimes I'll be in a conversation and somebody, you know, will say, oh, I'm, uh, oh I'll tell, they'll ask me what I do and I'll tell them and they'll say, actually, we're really struggling with that. And then, of course, that's the opportunity to pitch what we do and then leave it to them to kind of make a call. Sometimes they'll say, I'd love to hear more. This, this, I need one, two, three, four. Could you tell me more? And then we'll work on a proposal and share it with them and mm. have follow-up calls. Sometimes it comes through, sometimes it doesn't. So sometimes the opportunity is, presents itself where somebody's talking about their struggle, but other times, you know, we, we, we literally go out and look for the business. So I'll go to certain events, more so before, you know, pre-COVID, mm -hmm. but even now, or I'll give talks, and as a follow-up to those talks, usually um, I'll pick up a lead or two, mm -hmm. somebody who will say, I'd really love to hear more. Mm -hmm. I, I think I need you for my business. Mm -hmm. The minute somebody says that, I know that's a lead. Mm -hmm. I need to pursue it, see how I can, uh, um, how I can help them. Wow. And so we've been able to, to convert some, some, um, you know, some leads into actual clients. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, it, it takes a while to convert them. You know, I'm using convert, which basically just means get them to, to commit to, to, to you know, buying our services. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it'll take even six months. Other times, you know, you speak to somebody and in a month they call you back and say, you know, I really want to move with this, you know. There's a lady I met a couple of weeks ago at um, a book launch. We sat next to each other, we chatted, it was really nice. Um, and then we said, you know, we exchange numbers. You know, ladies, when we're together, how we, we really connect and we bond and we exchange numbers. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we use those numbers, sometimes we don't. Mm -hmm. She literally um, got in touch and we chatted. And last night at 
at 8 p.m. we were on a call mm -hmm. because she'd asked me to give her a proposal for some services and some support that she wanted. I shared the information with her. We had a follow-up call yesterday, and so next week she's going to make a decision. So that's a classical example of where you're able, you meet somebody and very quickly you move from a lead to literally a, con a conversion where you, know, you close the deal and, and you, know, you start doing work for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you must always be at your best, like you're always on your A game, which can be difficult and exhausting if you're two people, but I can see you and what you do are one. We are, I am, mm -hmm. <laughs> it is, mm -hmm. <laughs> it is. But coming back to you and, and this uh, around the sort of brand you, mm -hmm. I mean, you, 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 first of all, you're great at your job, you look fabulous. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, but also, part of your job and, and, and everything that you're doing is, 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 is going towards building and strengthening this brand that is you. Mm -hmm. Doing the social, I love what you've done, which is to outsource it. Not doing anything about it mm -hmm. is a lost opportunity. Mm -hmm. So outsourcing it as opposed to ignoring it and saying it's actually not the fun part for me, mm -hmm. would have, it, it would have been very unfortunate. So you outsourcing it is the right thing to do. As long as the person who's doing the work of, of creating the, the, the content is creating content that is true to the essence of you. Yes. And of course they will do the, create the content mm. with your direction, with your guidance. You probably say, yes, that works. No, I don't like the sound of that. Mm -hmm. And so that's great. Mm -hmm. That's the way to do it. Because you have a unique opportunity. You have a really wonderful platform. Mm -hmm. And the world is so digital. Mm -hmm. So if you're not on digital as a, an, an individual brand as well, you're mm -hmm. really losing the opportunity mm -hmm. to build your brand. I was very deliberate um, when I was working in corporate. My platform is LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. I, I actually love LinkedIn. Okay, now I'm on, 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 on uh, IG as well mm -hmm. because I'm talking to young people and that needed to be the place I was, in, um, I was in. But LinkedIn was my channel and I was very deliberate about managing my LinkedIn. My profile was always top notch. You would never find typos. My picture was always bright and it draws you in. Mm -hmm. Every, anytime I got a new qualification, I would update it. Mm -hmm. I've gotten three international jobs. Oh. Just randomly somebody inboxing me, DMing me and telling me, hi, you've got a great profile. We think we have something. You'd be a great fit for this opportunity. Mm -hmm. Would you mind, to, would you be open to talking to us? Oh, three wow. international jobs, two out of the country. One was a regional job based out of here. So to, your, to the point around digital mm -hmm. and, online, and the, maybe the social space, you don't have to manage it on your own like, you, like you're doing. That's a really good way to you know, build your brand. You can get a friend to do it if you don't have a budget to do it, you know. I'll, you know, do this for me and I'll, I'll help you out with that. Mm. You know, there's always ways that you can, you know, find ways to get it done. Mm. But it's so important because opportunities land in your lap through digital. Mm -hmm. I'm such a fundamental believer in that. It's funny how times have changed. Like, a long time ago, what's a Tuni Jiseme? I'm not young, Nani. <laughs> I'm not small. So a long time ago, we had to go to the cyber cafe to log into our emails, to go on Facebook. And Facebook then was a whole phenomenon. Yes. Watch on IG side. Yeah. It was making a lot of noise. And at the time, we used to have, or we'd create kind of our taglines with a mood or a feeling. So baby girl, uh, 2005, or, or a sexy thing, uh, 1992. And I hear right now that is not very acceptable because you can actually miss on opportunities simply because of how you present yourself. Not even, you know, picture or anything, simply just by your email address or your name. So these things are very important. It's all, the devil is in the details, isn't it? Absolutely. I have a saying, everything communicates. Mm -hmm. Everything you say, everything you don't say, everything you do, everything you don't do, communicates something about your brand or about you. Mm -hmm. So you're right. Now, having said that, different channels can play different roles. Mm -hmm. So you can still be baby girl 254, mm -hmm. maybe on IG, because IG is your fun one with your friends. Mm -hmm. and, this, and, and, and it's not your, sort of your corporate one. So you don't want people to see the professional, you know, fabulous Valentine behind the mic mm -hmm. and everything. That's really your fun place where you're on holiday and you show all the wonderful things and you're there in your bikini, mm -hmm. you know. That could be your strategy where you say IG is my personal space. And then LinkedIn is your professional space. So that's the one where you're not going to put the over sexy pose and everything because mm -hmm. that's you, the professional. You want people to see you out there as the really seasoned, um, well-spoken professional uh, media personality that you are, mm -hmm. you know. And then you could say Facebook might be one that you use professionally, but the lighter side of who you are. So that's where you do kind of fun stuff, but never the more kind of risque or pushing the envelope stuff 
you know, on your Facebook. Maybe you have stuff that you, you know, a little business that you do, or maybe there are brands that you want to promote. Um, so that's kind of your professional face, but where it's bringing together your personality with maybe businesses that you're partnering with. Mm -hmm. And that could be your strategy for Facebook. Mm -hmm. So I always say, you don't have to use all the different social media channels in the same way. Mm -hmm. You can oh. decide what you use for what. Mm -hmm. So for me, the longest time, for the longest time, my IG was really my fun place. I'm out with my friends. We're having a nice glass of wine. Mm -hmm. You know, I put it in there. Oh, we're out and it's somebody's birthday and we're dancing. I'll put it there. You know, just hanging out with, you know, my, my closest friends and I post them there. And mm -hmm. then I eventually transitioned it into the career series. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing, I'm still posting personal pictures of me hanging out doing stuff, but the, you know, the key thing I post is career tips and tricks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's now my IG. Mm -hmm. My LinkedIn is my professional thing. So you'll never see me posting sort of random <laughs> nonsense mm. or silly stuff on my LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. I'm really serious um, on my LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Facebook, I'm not using as much, mm -hmm. but it's, it's more of kind of friends. But I'm, I'm, I've kind of been off Facebook because I've been focusing on IG. Mm -hmm. So my recommendation and uh, to anyone would be think uh, strategically think um, and decide on how you're going to use social which channel will play which role mm -hmm. yeah and don't lose out on LinkedIn I think a lot of young people it's a very foreign concept yes. yeah in fact <laughs> somebody <laughs> I posted something on, about LinkedIn on mm -hmm. my Instagram and somebody said what's what that LinkedIn that? <laughs> I was like Hi. Oh, we have to finish this conversation. Time is running out oh, okay. all my days. However, as the last thing, I can't mean the last thing, um, there is a tendency for the younger generation to express themselves online, more so than how I did or how we did when we were growing up. Maybe mm -hmm. possibly because it, we, it wasn't that a big, it wasn't a very big deal at the time. Technology was not as it is right now. A mm -hmm. two-year-old can unlock a tab and do what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. At two years old, nkwana mawe mimi. I together, I was <laughs> there walking without shoes, enjoying my life the best way I can. So how would you advise someone who may go through personal things or not so personal, but there's no line for a, this is something I will go through in real life and I will choose not to put it out there because this is how you speak at, from a point of ignorance, you know? but they belong to a certain group. It could be a tribe, it could be orientation in terms of sexually, and now you want to talk about mm -hmm. the whole umbrella. And then this thing comes and gets you at nine years later, you're trying yeah. to get sick employment and like, ah, you remember that thing you said last time, long time ago on Twitter? Eh, now we're not going to give you a job because of that. Would mm -hmm. you, last time, would you please advise them on that? Anything that goes online stays online. So, Think about what you're putting out there. You know, any stuff like to do with hate, hate stuff, it can come back to bite you. I don't know if you read about Chrissy Teigen. Yes! Online bullying that happened, I don't know how many years ago. I rest my case. And it she came apologized. Back to what, she mm. had to. But, the, you know, think of the negative publicity <sighs> that comes so with much. that. Mm. You know? So you, you, you do have to think about what you're putting out there. You, if you're comfortable to share, then go out I mean, go on and share, mm -hmm. knowing that it's out there and you can't pull it back. Mm -hmm. And that's okay if you're comfortable. You have to think about that. And sometimes sharing some of those things might even open opportunities for you. You know, mm -hmm. you might share that, you know, you, you, I don't know, maybe you love to sing, but you're, you, you're too timid to sing uh, in public and, mm -hmm. and you're singing about your broken heart. And then, it, I don't know, it opens up an opportunity for you. Mm -hmm. But also things can really, really backfire. So think about what you're putting out there. My other advice is, you know, it doesn't take much to be kind. Mm. You hey, it's free. Why do haters have to hate? Mm -hmm. Actually, being kind is free mm -hmm. and it's, it's so easy to do, you know? Mm -hmm. So just treat others the way you want to be treated. It's, it's just so much easier. What has helped me in life is having a positive mental attitude. Mm -hmm and dealing with people, treating them with respect, whether it's the tea girl, whether it's the guy who's cleaning or sweeping outside, whether it's the boss, the CEO, or the chairman of this or that. It's just so much easier to treat people civilly with respect, mm -hmm. and you'll find it comes back to you. I like that. Yeah. There's a way I don't want this conversation to end, but I said that was the last question, so it has to be. How can we find you on social media? How can we reach out in conclusion? Wonderful, thank you. So um, I'm on LinkedIn. A Ching Butler. So if you just search under a Ching Butler, my main channel, especially for young people, is Instagram 
at attitude. Mm -hmm. So not attitude, but attitude, mm -hmm. because my name is Achieng. Mm -hmm. So replace the double T with a CH, mm -hmm. and you'll find me on Instagram. I'm also on Facebook, though, no, though not as active on Facebook. Okay, yeah. thank you once again for coming too. We will be having words after this, guys. Mm, yeah. If you want to also have words, go follow her and reach out at White Five on Facebook, White Five Four channel on Twitter. Hashtag is Thursday Vibes. Don't go away. We have a couple of more interviews waiting for you.